Right. Smart myself up with my sign in church. The church at Bosom Key. I took the bus from Chichester and I've had a walk by the Bosom Channel. Uh, the weather is a bit mixed at the moment. It's very cloudy. It's raining outside at the moment. But what I am hoping is that the weather will break. We'll get some sunny intervals. High contrast spot meter of the highlights could be very interesting if the weather improves. And at the moment, I don't know whether you can hear it, but I can hear the rain outside. So I think I'll wait a little longer inside the church, which incidentally is a very historic church. It has a very fine Saxon arch, and I've taken a picture of it. Well, as you can see, AV or audiovisual is much more than photography. In fact, if I were to split it into percentages, then it's only about 33% photography, 33% sound, and 33% production. The remaining 1% is luck. Now, if you are a photographer, and you are looking for assistance, then it's best if that person is disciplined in either sound or production. If, on the other hand, you are skilled in all three, then lucky you. All too often, when I see other AV productions, it's no more than photographs accompanied by music acting just as wallpaper. So pity the poor composer. If, on the other hand, there is a meaningful attempt to illustrate the music, to interpret the music, then I think it would stand a better chance in a competition. But sound and production is a wonderful creative tool in addition to photography. So let's get cracking. However, I will deal with photos first. AV is not a platform for showcasing your award-winning images, no. They should flow seamlessly, perhaps specially taken for that purpose and integrated with sound and production effortlessly, the join imperceptible. Take your cue from TV productions and whilst you won't have the resources to emulate them, there are many tips to be learnt that can be used in our more modest productions. For subjects, my preference is a documentary, enabling me to use photography to express a subject that I am passionate about and that has nothing to do with photography. Current shows include Elga, Vaughan Williams, Heritage Railways and Brunel, and I am researching Thomas Telford. I have to confess that I get more satisfaction exploiting photography and sound to produce a video than creating the absolute photograph. Adding a voiceover immediately raises the status of a program, even if you are visually interpreting music. Some explanation may be helpful for your audience before the music starts, and I consider showing text instead, although possibly helpful, whose hearing is impaired, to be a cop-out. Most microphones in my experience connected to a computer are lo-fi invest in a quality microphone and use something like Audacity, which is free, to edit sound. Claude Debussy was to music as the Impressionist painters were to art. He was an absolute master, a supreme illusionist in conjuring up atmospheric images from the simplest of musical forms emerging from the printed page. 
Image, six short works for solo piano, composed around 1903, are in that style. Opening the first series is Reflections in the Water. Listen how its dreamlike opening is interrupted by chromatic chords throughout the piece. The reflections now distorted by disturbances in the water. This is the microphone I use for my voiceovers. I bought it many years ago, but it's very high quality. Now, it hasn't got any protection on here at the moment, but even if it did, I wouldn't speak into the microphone like this. Why? Well, the danger is that P's and T's in particular will explode into the microphone. I think it's called embosha, that I think is the posh word, and it creates a very ugly sound. What do I do instead? I speak across the microphone, and not only that, I don't record in mono, I don't record in stereo, but I record in double mono. Now that will place my voice firmly in the centre of the sound stage, and then I would add natural sounds in stereo, either in Audacity or in Microsoft PowerPoint. This gives more control, especially if a loud sound, such as a steam engine, is in danger of drowning your voice. Of course, you could arrange for the steam engine to pass before or after your voiceover, but it does remove the sense of occasion, particularly if the steam engine is a video recording. Finally, don't narrate too quickly. This can annoy older people in your audience. This brings me to video recording. That can enhance a production enormously. Most recent digital cameras have the facility and in high quality that is good enough to mix with still images. Even the sound recording is more than acceptable and a good trick to engage the interests of an audience is for a still image to suddenly start moving. One of the worst manifestations of AV production that tempt some photographers are the number of different transition effects possible between images. When each transition is different, it encourages the rather cheeky comment, nice dissolves, shame about the pictures. Usually keeping to one is best, and I have to admit that I prefer a fade as it creates the third image during a dissolve, which I should add that not audiences like. Other transition effects I use sparingly and only to make a point. For example, if I talk about a book, I can use the expand transition to give the impression of opening a book. And when entering a church, I animate the doors to open a scene from outside, leading to an image taken inside. This requires a bit of additional work in Photoshop, but worth it. Despite my concern about using music as wallpaper, it is an important ingredient for any AV production, and for which the purchase of a music license should be considered. However, there are websites offering royalty-free music, and they include YouTube and free 
SFX. I find the quality rather mixed, but have used some in my productions, and the free SFX catalog also has sound effects. Occasionally, I have used the audio recording facility on my iPhone to record sound effects, and have found the quality surprisingly effective. Pause for a moment underneath the bridge known as the sounding arch and try the echo. You have to stand in the right place, but it provides some amusement for a few minutes. I was informed that by shouting, Hello, returned the best echo, duly executed at the risk of greeting a passing sailor. Hello. 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 When using music, I would regard it as an advantage, but not essential, if you can read music. You know, music has full stops and commas, just like the written word, but they are given a different name. If I have to finish a piece of music, I try to fade out at a natural place, what we call a cadence. And sometimes I hear other productions where there's not even a fade out, the music just stops, leaving the audience hanging in the air. You know, when I choose music, I sometimes have to reject some pieces of music because I cannot fade out in time with the visuals. So unfortunately, it gets rejected. Creating a seamless integration of visuals with sound in a production as an organic whole is the most imaginative element in AV, and miles from just having music to support visuals. I do use music as a background for some of my productions where appropriate, but watch my shows on YouTube and you will see and hear that I do much more. This looks like my train. Soon I was swapping the skyscrapers of Croydon with the soaring steeple of Chichester Cathedral. Let's look inside. Ah, oh, hang on a minute. Here comes the boss. Better listen. I have arrived at uh, Chichester Cathedral. Thankfully it is open, but I'm having to handhold the camera. But as the EM1 Mark II and the 12 100 Pro lens both have image stabilizers, then there should be no problem in getting sharp images, which I will now show you. One of many treasures in Chichester Cathedral is the Mark Chagall window, unveiled in 1978, interpreting Psalm 150. As I must point the camera up from horizontal, an optical distortion known as converging verticals makes uprights lean inwards, something the eye does not see. However, Stand a little further back and zoom in, and converging verticals are minimized. If unable to use a tripod because the cathedral does not allow their use, camera shake may occur due to increased magnification. However, with excellent image stabilization in Olympus OMD range, handholding in this situation isn't a problem. The shutter speed was an 80th of a second, focal length 44 millimeters, that's 88 in film. In post-production, I corrected converging verticals in Adobe Lightroom. A documentary or a visit to a specific location, such as a National Trust property, gives me scope to mix my voice with sound effects, sometimes authentic and music, all integrated so that you cannot see the join.
Recently, and with a certain amount of reluctance, some of the voiceovers are videoed. With due modesty, where it exists, I discovered, particularly on YouTube, that my audience wished to see me talking about a place, and very often at the site. It all becomes highly creative, and dare I say, time-consuming, requiring much planning. Well, I pretty well finished my walk up uh, Cape's Nose, which is behind me, 1,246 feet above sea level. I hope you've enjoyed the journey yourself from the comfort of your armchair. I'm off now to the railway station to catch the train back home, the 7.36, so I better not linger too much. But before, I might just give my hair a bit of a brush, because of course, I'm travelling first class. See you next time.